you're going to see a lot of footage of, of teaching your horse to behave for the farrier if you don't own a magic wand um, or bubble wrap to keep yourself safe and to avoid one of these. Um, there's a lot of good footage here. This horse I was called out to and he, they, he could not get trimmed. They had put these in here and you'll see the white line was too short and broke away. I'm against yep. holding them down to try and force them into a situation. So after doing a lot of groundwork um, with this particular horse in one session, I was able to handle his feet pretty good without anyone holding them. Because the well, I gotta let you listen to the girl. He's never been able to do this before. <laughs> the first time we had the farrier out, I thought someone was going to get killed. They said uh, they locked him in the stall to do him, and it was not pretty. Well, this is a horse that had to get drugged into a stupor for the first five years of her life, and there were horse farriers who wouldn't touch her. So I'm kind of amazed. We'll come back to her later so you can see how we got there. So I just want to be patient with the horse, but I also want to give him a correction. Um, I don't want to get kicked, and I know this horse can do it. Um, during my session, he did take one swipe at me, but he missed. Um, you can see he's, you know, agitated, scared. Um, this was the second session, and. You know, I told the girl, there's no way I'm locking them in the stall, <laughs> you know, or putting them on them post uh, is dangerous. You know, you got to get a connection with them, get some trust and respect. And once you do that, then they'll, they'll give you them feet. But, you know, I'm always going out to these jobs, having no idea what I'm going to get into. Um, many times people aren't honest with me. Um, but I can guarantee you these horses are a problem. People don't spend what they have to spend to get me to come out and travel to their place. It's usually very close to $200 for a two-hour visit, and they're not paying that if the horse wasn't an issue. I can guarantee it. Um, there's a few pictures coming up here. This little miniature horse coming up, you can see, I want you to see where his feet are. Uh, they're on this lady and she's six foot uh, and I seen him grab her neck you can get hurt this is playing his his feet are tucked in there um, and he was playing but the other one wasn't interested and that's my own horse a uh, horse that attacked him so you can get hurt really bad that's a bruise of mine um, not I don't even remember but um, I haven't got kicked, thank God, long time. But there's a danger, so you have to be careful, stay safe. Here I'm using the hoof pick to annoy the horse at the knee, and when he takes his weight off, I accept that foot. So he takes the weight off, I have rubber chest no farriers would want to come back and work with this horse so she couldn't get anybody to trim it because nobody wanted to deal with it. Pulling back, kicking. Um, so if you teach a horse on cue to lift that foot and instead of grabbing the tendons like is traditional, which is <clears throat> okay if they'll give it to you, but best to cue it in the beginning and accept it. For the, for those two feet. This is not at any pressure. Lift. Good. Support it. And also good to give her something solid like your knee to brace that hoof on. I love the hoof jack. There wasn't a level piece of ground here to put it on. Notice if I have a handler, they're not holding that horse choked up tight. I, I have to teach them, and you'll see that coming up footage. 
um, to stand well away and give the horse a correction if it is jerking it hook out of my hand. She had any fly spray. I don't like to use some fly spray, but when I'm trimming, I certainly do. <laughs> if you can't get the do job done because of flies in the it's difficult. Will that do her foot balance? anything wrong, you can just give a snap of that lead rope. Timing is everything when you're training horses. on the end of there. The reason why I don't use a horse at first is we don't need to punish him while we're learning. So this is how I ask him. Finger on the rope. One, two. That's the video. Right? <laughs> it's easy to remember. All right. So a lot of people will go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We don't give them ten chances. Okay. When a horse asks another horse to back up, one, two, three, okay? He doesn't go, are you ready? You ready? <laughs> All right? So it's one, two, free hand comes up, that's the hammer down. So we don't want to use the same hand because I can't take that back. When I use the same hand, one, two, and I do like this, I can't stop it. With here, I can stop it. This is a young horse that wouldn't hold his feet up and wanted to kick out. Uh, it was my first time ever going here. And so I showed her how to maintain her distance and have him uh, in the big area instead of cross-tied. And he was much better. A uh, horse doesn't want to be confined. And again, I use that my fingernail just to bug him and I rub his chest. That's when the very first time I do it. So I'm just teaching them a cue. You know, if I bug you with my fingernail or the hoof pick and you take your weight off of it, I'm gonna give you a rub. Um, and then I'll and then I'll just pick it up. That's gonna be his cue to lift. And um, so yeah, he went from very unruly, she showed me in the cross ties that he wouldn't pick them feet up and keep them up or jerk them away to this and just just by using this method, instead of grabbing their foot and leaning your body into them, or, you know, it's a big difference. This next horse coming up, so yeah. mini horse, he was going to be euthanized. A farrier and a vet told the woman that he should be in the ground because he attacked people. And he had to be tranked um, to be trimmed. She sent him to me. And... This is my second time ever having him on the hoof jack. He did try to kick me once. I'm by myself here with the camera sitting on the floor, but not in this session, the first session. And I kicked him back once, uh, just once, give him a bump. And, um, and he never did it again. And um, he, I mean, he was a serious case of uh, attacking people and going through for their throat. And they would wear a helmet just to work with them. Um, so, yes, I did a lot of groundwork with this guy um, to get him to cooperate. 
and uh, I really love this little guy they called him Hannibal Lecter um, so anyways what a sweetie but that's not what they used to call him um, patience correction when need be and um, you know giving them their foot back where they want it but the very first meeting with this horse I was able to pick up all four feet and they kept cautioning me to be careful because they thought he was going to go through my throat um, I never saw that movie Hannibal yeah, Lecter and I don't think I want to but anyways he stayed for a month and never tried to do anything dirty after probably the first day uh, there is this standing is a horse I never put all in buckets four feet before in the water. People think, oh, you could do that Good with boy. your horses, but not with mine. I was by myself at this farm and did this with this guy, young guy. Uh, and then here's the, we're back at the white horse. This is the one earlier that had to be tranked. This is how I actually met this person. It was one of the things this horse had issue with. Standing in the cross ties, just totally unruly. It's almost, and watching this, this is my first time watching this when I put it together, because we just did this one. Um, I can't believe how, how quiet how quiet this horse is. She looks like she's sleeping. She looks like quarter horse here. Um, how mellow. It's almost hard to believe how uh, unruly she was. At the last barn, somebody that was holding her said that she struck out on him. Um, I wasn't there, but I know the Trimmer was having a hard time with her that this lady had to hire me to step in to train this horse to behave for the farrier and just took a little patience is all and um, what else I was going to say oh doing it in the open and not holding the horse choked up tight She wants to behave. She wants to be good. If you have a nervous person holding the horse, that's going to make your horse nervous. That's a fact. So you got to train yourself. Tell my clients, exhale, cock a leg, just like the horses do when they're relaxing. Let your energy down. Blow your air out. Audibly blow that air out and just get relaxed correct if you have to and it has to be swift and then done with you don't need to say anything just a quick snap of the lead but not that downward pull it's just snap and release but yeah it's uh, amazing looking at this horse because uh, I've seen her before when she used to be uh, uptight and uh, she's just doing amazing Other thing is setting that horse up. If I'm going to take that leg on the side that I am on, that's her left front, I want her right rear to be behind the other foot so she can balance. A mature horse, they will do that automatically. Um, baby horse, not so much, but it's not as important with the backs but when you're taking the front like if I'm on the other side and I take her right front I want that left rear to be a little behind the right rear and then she can balance herself just one less thing to have to worry about make sure uh, they're balanced
know if she has, uh, if the owner has footage of her behaving badly, but most people don't want to tape that stuff. You know, a lot of my videos, uh, it's a little awkward. Hey, can I tape your horse being a jerk? You know, a lot of people don't want you um, to tape. Especially people that own high price horses that want to sell them. They don't want any of that on video to show how their horse was. But like I said, people don't uh, pay me what I get. Uh, I get $75 an hour. Uh, when I go to someone's property and it's a two hour minimum because I'm not going to drive an hour away to work one hour and drive an hour home I couldn't make a living doing that so when they call me the horses are pretty bad or they wouldn't spend the money if they bring them to me and truck in for an hour it's 75 bucks they can do all the traveling And I've been doing this for over 20 years, so I usually get the job done. More often than not. So just um, when you're rehabbing a problem horse, a little patience, a little rubbing on them goes a long way. Letting them know that you're not just going to jerk that foot away from them. And, you know, especially with them hinds, uh, you want to, when you're pulling them out, you want to be patient with those and wait for them to relax. It's just like if you're going to take their temperature, you're not going to jerk that tail up and make it raise up you're going to put your hand into there and you're going to wait wait for that horse to relax before you lift it to take their temperature And you could do a little groundwork before you start trimming with this horse, teaching the owner to send it back and forth, disengage its hindquarters, just move it where you want to move it. So if she did move and swing her whole body right or left, we know how to put her right back where she came from. It just sets her, sets her up for behaving for the farrier. And uh, I'm happy to report that right after this session with these two, the farrier came the following day and I was told that the horse was perfect. So that's good news. So if your horse is unruly, it's not your farrier's job or your barefoot trimmer's job to train your horse or to get kicked, you know. Um, if you can't do it by watching a few videos and you don't want to get hurt either, then hire a professional. One that you have seen work or heard good things about. Um, best if you can watch them work. Before people hire me, I tell them I have a ton of YouTube videos. Um, but before I had the videos, I have recommendations from people um, that like my work, you know. And if you don't have any references, it's your horse. If you're uncomfortable, then you speak out um, and say, hey, I'm uncomfortable with what you're doing. Um, if it doesn't look right, it's probably not. I know some people watch some of my videos and think it's awful, but most of them don't know what they're looking at. They don't understand that I'm going out to horses I just met and I don't have most of them in for 30 days to make friends with them or know their history. Um, but certainly 
you should be you can stop uh, and say let's stop if you think somebody's being abusive to your horse um, there's correction and then there's you know just man handling or woman handling we want to be fair This hoof jack is a wonderful thing, um, and make sure if you use it that you put your foot on it so the horse doesn't tip it over, um, and so it, it makes the horse feel real steady putting their leg right under them, and I know most farriers want to take that leg way out to the side to make themselves comfortable because um, they're shoeing horses all day and they don't want to get down so low, but that makes your horse uncomfortable, especially uh, young ones, old ones, arthritic ones, so it's really kind. Uh, you're doing the horse a service if you let him teach him how to be on this hoof jack. Um, the ball here, um, or the cradle, you know, you can swap it out, and it's well worth the money. I don't know what they are now, I paid like 180 for mine. Um, well worth saving your back, making your horse happy, and then you can practice for the farrier or your trimmer by using the hoof jack so when they come the horse is used to it, not afraid of it and blowing at it. And we're almost at the end, so right after this, uh, back inside to the cross ties. Um, it's a longer version of the first clip I showed you of this horse. Um, I know it's a long video, but people that want to learn from it, that's why I made it this long. You know, kind of a how-to. Always be careful and but uh, you obviously don't have to watch it if you don't want to, but for those that do, they can see how we got there. And if you made it this far, you might as well hang in because it's just a couple more minutes. Oh. Whoops. at that little shaky part, sorry. These things take uh, hours to put together. And I don't want to go back, it's late. Oh my goodness, it's almost 12.30. You can comment, Marcy, on how your horse is doing or how it used to do. Well, this is a horse that had to get drugged into a stupor for the first five years of her life. And there were horse farriers who wouldn't touch her. So I'm kind of amazed.
just go on to the motions because she's getting the trim. So I'm just having her hold your foot up for a longer period of time. Jasper's running.